This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Many across the United States are celebrating this Thanksgiving holiday, but many Native Americans observe it as a national day of mourning, marking the genocide against their communities and the theft of their land. We'll spend today looking at the standoff at Standing Rock in North Dakota, the struggle against the $3.8 billion Dakota Access Pipeline that's galvanized the largest resistance movement of Native Americans in decades. In Cannonball, North Dakota, members of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and representatives of more than 200 indigenous nations from across the Americas have been encamped for months to block the construction of the pipeline. It's slated to carry half a million barrels of crude a day from the Bakken oil fields of North Dakota through South Dakota, Iowa, and into Illinois, where it'll link up with an existing pipeline to carry the oil down to the refineries in the Gulf. The thousands of water protectors, as they call themselves, have been joined by many non-Native allies, all concerned a leak could contaminate the Missouri River, which provides water for the tribe and millions of people downstream. The tribe also says the pipeline's construction across unceded Sioux Treaty land will lead to the desecration of sacred sites, including tribal burial grounds. In recent months, hundreds have been arrested after using their bodies to block construction of the pipeline and to protect the sacred sites. The movement has also spread across the country and the world, as protesters have held demonstrations at banks funding the Dakota Access Pipeline. The movement has largely been ignored on this year's presidential campaign trail and by the national corporate media. But Democracy Now! has been there on the ground covering the standoff closely. Today, we're bringing you highlights of that coverage in North Dakota. We begin with our report. Labor Day weekend, it was Saturday, September 3rd, when unlicensed Dakota Access security guards attacked water protectors trying to defend a sacred tribal burial site from destruction. Criminals! You guys are criminals! Go get your money somewhere else! Yes, 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 yes. We're standing at the construction site of the Dakota Access Pipeline. It looks like there are at least three bulldozers that are, to people's surprise at this moment, uh, actually bulldozing the land. There's a helicopter above, there's security here, and hundreds of people have been marching up when they heard that the construction site is actually Look, active right now. Yeah, that's what you do it to us! Where are we going to live without this? My name is Jacob, Jacob Johns. And where are you from? I'm from Spokane, Washington. I'm Hopi and I'm from Arthur. And can you describe what you see, what they're doing? They are... They're bulldozing. They're bulldozing and preparing to put it, install a pipeline to go into the Ethan River. And above, we see a helicopter. The helicopter itself has been following us and taking pictures, and um, we're filming them in return. Come on, guys! Oh, come we gotta stop this! Why are we standing in The bulldozers are still going, and they're yelling at the men in hard hats. One man in hard hat threw one of the protesters down. And they're marching over the dirt mounds. Some of the security have dogs. The six bulldozers are pulling back right now. People are marching forward in their tracks. There are men, women, and children. More security trucks are pulling up. There are some protesters on horseback. Hundreds of people are coming from the main camp. They're climbing up the tracks left by the bulldozers. Six at least, I've counted, that are now receding. Protesters advance as far as a small wooden bridge. Security unleashes one of the dogs, which attacks two of the Native Americans' horses. Security has some kind of gas. People are being pepper sprayed. from 
New York, what are you spraying people with? I haven't sprayed anything. Yeah, but what is that? Yeah, he just makes me in the face right now. Amy Goodman, this guy makes me in the face. Can you show us the label? Look, it, it's all over my sunglasses. Just makes me in the face. Dog bit right now. Dog on me. This is throw the dog on me. Look at this. Look at this. Let me say. Throw the dog on me. No, you did it on purpose, man. Let me say. Let me say. Over there with that dog. I was like walking, throw the dog on me straight, even without any warning, you know? Look at this. Look at this. The dog yeah, the dog did it, you know? Look at this. Yeah, so did it. Ma'am, your dog just bit that protester. Your dog just bit that protester. Are you telling the dogs to bite the protester? The dog has blood in its nose and its mouth. It's just still standing here threatening. You can't put your blood on the dog. You're an against evil your woman. Own. You can't animal. put your blood on the dog. These people are just threatening all of us with them, these dogs. And she, that woman over there, she was charging them and it bit somebody right in the face and then it charged at me and tried to bite me and she's still, they're still threatening these dogs against us and we're not doing anything. Why are you letting their, her dog go after the protesters? It's covered in blood. One of the pipeline security men unleashes a dog into the crowd. Protesters respond using a flagpole and sticks to fend off the dog attacks. After the protesters said that the dog was bloody from biting them, they then pulled the dogs away, and now pickup truck by pickup truck is pulling away. We'll see what happens. The protesters are moving in to ensure that the security leaves. Let's go check on this woman. What happened? I just saw a lot of maize, and the sweat was run, uh, uh, dripping it into—it was the sweat was making it run down into my eyes. I had my glasses on, and that spared me the brunt of it, but then the sweat started putting it in. How are you doing? I'm great. What's your name? Raina Crow. And what do you think you've accomplished today? I hope we've accomplished letting Enbridge know that the people of this nation and the people of this world, tribal or otherwise, have withdrawn their social license to pollute water and that they need to find an honest, nonviolent way to make a living. Where are you from? Duluth, Minnesota. I don't know more Duluth. I got maced twice. I got bit by a dog. I was front line. I Where did you get bit? I got bit on the ankle where my boot is. So I told him they needed to leave, but the, the guy didn't believe me. So he didn't want to listen. He uh, stuck his hand out and he, sp he maced me. Uh, this other guy, and I think he maced a, a lady too. Then. They, they, they tried getting the dogs on us, so I was, I was just standing there, I wasn't really doing nothing. That dog ran up on me and it bit my, around my ankle. You pushed them back there? Yes. Why is this such an important fight to you? Because water is life. Like I said, without water, we'd all, we wouldn't be here. These, these plants wouldn't be here. There'd be no oxygen. We all die without it. I, I wish they'd open their eyes and have a heart to realize, you know, if this happens, we're not going to be the only ones going to suffer. They're going to suffer, too. What tribe are you with? I'm Oglala Sioux, Food Blood. From? Pine Ridge Reservation. What's your name and where are you from? Linda Lee Bruner. I'm from Belcourt, North Dakota. I've traveled from Wichita, Kansas. I stand for my grandchildren, my next grandchildren. I already got great grandchildren that are in the future. I know the 18 year old and 19 year olds that are getting ready to come here, they'll fight to the end. We're going to stay here just like in 1836. We're going to go down and wait and wait. This oil ain't going to go through. We should all walk out together. That's a good idea. Whoever said that. I am Elvia Ramirez. I I come from Arizona, Salt River. I'm in Pima Maricopa tribe. How old are you? I am 13 years old. And why are you out here today? 
I am with my family because I believe I hear what they're doing is wrong. This is very wrong. They should protect the water. Everybody needs water to live. Water is in us, no matter what. What about the oil? The oil should stay in the ground. They should just leave it because they're hurting Mother Nature. Mother Nature is important because without Mother Nature, we wouldn't be here. No one owns this land. This land belongs to the earth. We are only caretakers. We're caretakers of the earth. Oh. Do you feel like you won today? We win every day when we stand in unity. We stand and we fight. My name is Candy Mossett with the Indigenous Environmental Network. Is this where the DAPL is being built? Yes. This is the pipe that is leading up to the river. So what we're waiting for, or what Dakota Access is waiting for, is the easement to go underneath and bore under the water. My understanding was that with the TRO, they were supposed to completely quit construction, but I guess in the oil and gas industry, that's there not were the temporary way, right? restraining order. It, right. Well, the there was a restraining order, and they were supposed to. I thought we all thought stop construction completely, but they've been coming from the west over here ever this whole time, these past three weeks, ever since you saw the first demonstrations, and obviously now this is how close they are, right across the road from where we've been barricading. So they're continuing to lay pipe up to the point of where they're waiting for the easement to go underneath where they're gonna bore. So people are like, why are we gonna wait for that? We're not, we're gonna go out and we're gonna stop the pipeline. We're gonna stop it where it is. And that's what effectively has been happening the past few days in nonviolent direct action. How do you feel? I feel great. What did you accomplish today? We were well, protecting the water. water. That's what we were here to do and that's what we did. Where are your horses from? Crow Creek, South Dakota. And you came from there? Yes, ma'am. And so describe the scene to us. We protected our water and we did a good job at doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Special thanks to Laura Gottesdiener, John Hamilton, and Dennis Moynihan. That report was Labor Day weekend, when unlicensed Dakota Access security guards attacked Native Americans with dogs and pepper spray. Well, only hours before that attack, we interviewed Winona LaDuke of the White Earth Reservation in Minnesota, who was standing near her teepee at a nearby resistance camp. And the governor, you know what I feel like telling the governor is that, you know, you are not George Wallace and this is not Alabama, you know? This is, this is 2016, and you don't get to treat Indians like you have for those last hundred years. We're done, you know? It'll be interesting times. Indigenous leader Winona LaDuke. 